רודיה קוסלובסקי, שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. רודיה, you have just uh, starred in a wonderful play at the Malenki Theater, The Black Monk, based on Chekhov. Congratulations for a wonderful performance. Thank you. How was it for you? How did it feel? It felt like uh, the sixth play. This is the sixth night we are opening. And it's wonderful to see the audience uh, getting into this 100 years old story about a modern man written 100 years ago. And it's all about modern people who are getting a little bit crazy by the needs and the wants of our time. It is written by Chekhov 100 years ago, but he was predicting the future in a way, and how all the people will be like the academic people. And you see them all around them, all around us now, gathering today with the uh, madness, with the tendency to being mad. And uh, it's an old play, an old story with uh, very modern ideas. Very actual. Yeah. Very relevant for our lives. The mind of the people is always relevant. Chekhov is a modern prophet. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, this fantastic theater. Yes, this small and Small theater fun. which is about to celebrate its 50, 15th birthday very soon. Yeah. Uh, how special it is for you to First of all, perform in such a theater. It is very special because I heard about the director, Igor Berezing, something like six years ago, when a good friend of mine uh, tell me, told me that if you have a chance to work with this brilliant director, do so. And I was very busy for a long time. It was the first opportunity I had just after my first new sons were born. Mazal tov. Thank you very much. And it was a, a little bit crazy summer. And the first time when I entered the room, I saw like four different kinds of strange parrots or strange animals gathering in the same room, <laughs> all speaking Russian. <laughs> and I, and I ma- imagine to myself that if everybody else looks so queer, maybe I'm queer as well, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> maybe I'm not normal like the others. Welcome to the club. Yeah, it was yeah. a real welcome to the club. Yeah. For me. What, what about your fellow actors? It was it was amazing experience to work with people. With, I'm, I'm used to the Israeli actors most of the time. And... Those people come from the Russian school, and uh, it's, it was a lesson, a long, during the, the summer I went to a long lesson about another way of acting, uh-huh. uh, considering everything you are doing in a very professional way, in a way we are not used to in the Israeli theater, and it was experience It was a summer fling for me with so, the Russian theater. So now you are an expert uh, to the Israeli school and to the Russian school. Now, I'm a, after I thought I was a professional actor, now I understand that I'm a beginner. Aha, uh, yeah. modesty. Not the modesty. Y- humility. It's a f- very first steps in a new world. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, why acting? Why, why did, not? W- why, why did you choose acting? <laughs> why not? How did it start? I don't think it's a story for the camera. Uh, I was a basketball player. I mean, amateur basketball player. And uh, once I saw in the, in the gym, when we used to play in the basketball hall, the drama school, all the beautiful women on the floor, And the most unattractive guys of the school touching them all over. And I asked myself, what am I doing in the basketball team? <laughs> <laughs> the very truth about how I started to act. Yeah, it definitely explains it. Yeah, but after you get married, it's, it's becoming a side point. It's not become... No, oh, I, yeah. really, I really love it. I, th- I think this is the, yeah. the yeah. theme of the play, is about how you can 
become another person. And this is all about acting. Yeah. An opportunity to be another person in your life. Yeah. Maybe a few words about Israeli theater today. Both uh, mainstream and fringe. I think I, I walk the way you see it. I walk for a professional theater, uh, Be'er Sheva Theater. I love my group. I think there are a lot of very brilliant actors in my group. You don't see a lot of opportunities to play uh, real material, uh, challenging material. You see a theater that tries to perform what it thinks the audience want. We don't try. You try only in those small places like in here. Fringe. Fringe, yeah. You see a lot of awful things in Fringe, but once in a while you see something that opens your minds and you know it will be never be commercial. It cannot be commercial, but you are doing it only for your art. Mm -hmm. And this is the place, because otherwise you can be any other profession. You can, you can try to do whatever you want in your life, but this is the place that you feel that you do what you came for the when you wanted to play, this is what you wanted to do. As we say in Hebrew, for the soul. For the soul, definitely not for the money. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Let's talk about uh, role models. When you were uh, evolving yeah. as the great actor you are today, did you have role models? Foreign ones, Israeli ones, people you looked up to and... Yes, of course. Everybody has role models. I think my role models came from the people I saw on stage in Israel and the people I saw on stage when I started to go to the Russian theater in Israel and in Russia. My wife is she's from Russia and uh, I liked very much Odet Teomi and I liked the middle of the first time I saw Sasha. him. Sasha. Yeah, first time I saw him in a Russian theater it was and the Carmon and many, many other. I cannot even count them because mm -hmm. there are so many. Mm -hmm. And uh, the inevitable question, yeah. plays you would like to play in that you haven't already? Bug, Tracy Let. I hope I'm not too old for it. Well, the, the thing I wanted to do more than all, all it was the, the crime and punishment, but this opportunity flew over my head. Dostoevsky's. Yeah. I think this is the tragedy that most of the plays you want to play, you are either too young or too old to play. Yeah, but you never know. Yeah, you can never, you never know. know. Yeah. But I want to do Tracy Let's Bug. Mm -hmm. This is a... Israeli playwriters. Yeah. Who are, the one, who are the ones who have impressed you, who have captured your heart? Uh, I like Sobol very much. You're sure? Um, yeah, I'm a great fan of Kishon. Ephraim? Yeah. Chanoch Levin, in his way, is brilliant. He's international now, he's becoming international. Right. Uh, I like my friend Shai Pitovsky, who is a new modern one. A newcomer? He's not a newcomer. He was born with the in the same day like I did. Okay. Uh, he's a new writer, he got a new voice. Excellent. I don't think the Israeli theater now encourages, really encourages new voices. With uh, the exception of Fringe. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if in Fringe it is so desperating to do something that you really believe in and to know that so many people are not going to see it just because it's small and have no no background or financial background uh, and the country is not always supporting Fringe like it should. Mm -hmm. What can we wish uh, Rodia for the future? To do more plays with Berezin, to have... Uh, to have the money in his bank <laughs> to afford himself to do Fringe and to do good roles in the theatre itself and to have a good audience with believing people. And they do believe in you. This is what is so great about this place. Wonderful. So we wish you all that and more. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck and shalom.